How many have their Bibles with them today? Everybody hold your Bibles up. Everybody's got their phones. Awesome. All right. Everybody's got their Bible on their phones nowadays. You lift up, you say, lift up your Bible. All right. Lift your phone up. Say, lift up your phone. Everybody's got their phone. Lift up your whatever. It's all in your phone nowadays. We used to have, anyways, we used to have so many devices. Now we just have one device that does everything for us. But there's something special about having a paper Bible. How many have a paper Bible? An actual paper Bible with pages and everything like that. I love just being able to look and feel the Bible. It's a little bit different than, than kind of a glass screen, but I appreciate the technology that we have nowadays, but there's something special about, about a paper Bible. And it's interesting. I, I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the Word of God, and, and I know we're on the series of evangelism and all that, but I just want to I just want to think for a little bit just about God's word. You know, the word of God is something very very special. God is not a silent God. Think about it. God is not a silent God. What would happen? Because this could this potentially could be the way that God acts. He creates the world, and then he just zip, keeps his mouth shut and just watches what happens. Leaves us to ourself and just kind of watches the world kind of go its way. What would happen? Because that's what could actually happen. If God wanted to do that, he could just keep his mouth shut and, 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 and watch us destroy our own lives and everything. But God is not a silent God. Think about it. God speaks. Everybody say that after me. God speaks. God is not a silent God. And the Bible, another word for the Bible is what? The Word of God, right? The Word of God. God is not a silent God. And think about a word, okay? When someone is communicating something, they're actually sending a message from inside of themselves to somebody else. It's something that goes out, something that goes forth, something that if you receive it, if the hearer hears it and receives it, it can actually bring life into the person that receives it. It's the Word of God. God is not silent, but God speaks. I used to teach management a number of years ago and one of the things that we talked about was communication and communication is not just saying words because I could stand up here and if I knew Japanese I could speak in Japanese and nobody would understand I mean maybe people I don't know if there's any Japanese speakers out here but maybe not a lot of people would understand what I'm saying so I can't just say words and expect you to understand what I'm saying that's not communication but when God speaks, or when a person speaks, what they're trying to do is take the ideas and the heart and the message that is within them and put it in the heart of somebody else. That's what communication is. And that's what God does to us. He doesn't just leave us on our own, but he speaks. And he gives us his word. It's actually who he is in his word coming out and bringing life into us. How do you get to know another person? Well, you can stand in the same room with them, and you can be close to them, but if you don't speak to each other, you're never going to know them or understand them or know what's going on in their hearts. So when God speaks, when God's Word comes out, when we have the Bible and we read God's Word, then we start to understand God's heart. We start to under, understand God's character. We start to understand God's purpose. We start to understand. And the more we receive from God's word, the more we think like God and the more we become like him. There's many, many verses in the Bible. I'm just going to read a few of them that talk about the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17 so faith 
comes from hearing and hearing through the word, the word of Christ, the word of God. How does faith come? Through hearing the word, through hearing the word. So we could look at the opposite. We can't have faith without the word. We don't know what to believe in if we don't have the word. That's why what you have in your hand, what you have in your phone, the word of God, it's so valuable. It's so wonderful. Never, ever take it for granted. Do you know how many people sacrificed for this word? How many people gave hours and hours and hours of their lives to record and to write down and to produce the Bible that we have in our language? It's not a small thing. We take it for granted. We can download it onto our phone and you know, less than two minutes, and it's there on our phone. We got the whole Bible. It's not a small thing, though, because through history, so many lives have been laid down for this word. And even physically, people have given their lives for the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing through the word of Christ. Hebrews 4.12, another one. It says, the word of God, this word, the word that we have, is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And then if we read John 1 verse 1, what does it say? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus was the word of God sent forth from God, just like his words are. He is the word. He is the character. He is the, the heart of God sent out into the world to display God's heart to people. And Jesus is God. Let me ask you a question, though. What would it be like for you if you had to learn another language in order to read the Bible, what if, okay, I know a lot of us here, you know, probably know a couple different languages, English and Khmer, but what, let, let me ask you, how many people speak French here? All right, good. Nobody speaks French here. What would happen if you had to learn French in order to read the Bible? Yeah, it was difficult, right? It's not easy. You have to learn a brand new language just to read the Bible. Now, I, I believe you guys are hard workers, and I believe that you would apply and you love the Word of God so much that you would do it, and you would learn French in order to, to, to read the Bible. But you know what? As much as you read the Bible in French, it's not your heart language. It would be a little bit difficult for you, don't you think? You have to learn this brand new language. And maybe some of the words are familiar, you know, especially if we're English speakers. And, and okay, yeah, they have this word in English and this word in French, very similar. We get to know them a little bit. But if you had to learn a new language in order to read the Bible, it would make things a lot more challenging. It would make things a lot more challenging. And you know what? That's how some people in the world actually have to, have to live right now. They don't have the Bible in their own language. I want to tell you about this organization here in Cambodia. How many people have heard about the Bible Society of Cambodia? The Bible Society of Cambodia, they uh, produce and distribute and are involved in getting uh, uh, Bibles in many, many different, in, sorry, not many different, in, in Khmer, but they're also working together with other organizations here in Cambodia to translate the Bible from the original language into uh, different tribal languages uh, for Cambodia. In Cambodia, there's about 20 different languages. They would be Phnong, Khoi, the Kavet, um, Brol is another name. There's a number of different ones. And not a lot of them have the Bible in their language. There are people out there who have been evangelized to and, and told about God, but they do not have 
the word of God in their language, the life-changing word. They have to, if they want to read the Bible, they would have to learn another language in order to, to, to read the Bible. Now, the Bible Society is working together, and there's a couple of other different organizations. We have SIL, we have uh, Wycliffe Bible Translators. They're translating the Bible into different languages. And some of these minority groups now are getting the Bible in their own language. I want to show you a couple of pictures. These, hap these happened just a couple of weeks ago. These pictures are of a group of people, and I don't know if you can see uh, what's in the tray that they're holding there, but what it is, it's a new Bible translation. It's in the Kui language. Okay, the Kui language is a language that's uh, spoken by tribal peoples up in the north of Cambodia, and I believe it's just the New Testament. It's not the complete Bible. It's just the New Testament. But they're so happy that they have the Bible, the New Testament, in their language. And what they've done is they're giving the Bible a place of honor, putting it on a tray, flowers all around it, arranged all around. And take a look at the next picture. They're having a parade for the Bible that they've translated into their language. People have sacrificed time, and they have learned different languages and saw how we can translate what we have in, in Khmer or in other languages and put it into their own language so that they can read it. And they're actually taking it. Go, can you go to the next picture? They're actually taking it to the governor's house there in, in the village there, and they're presenting it to the governor. And, uh, and so they're giving him a copy and they're just letting him know how happy they are and how honored the, the, they are and how much of an honor they're giving to him to let him know that, yeah, we have the Bible in our language now. So it's really cool to see that what the Bible Society is doing and other organizations are working together. And it's not, when we talk about evangelism, obviously we're talking about what we can do to have other people and to, to, to tell the good news to other people, but to be able to give somebody, look, somebody sacrificed time for you to have the Word of God. And now here it is. We did it for you. And now they can read the Word of God, learn about the Jesus, learn about Jesus who we love, see what he did when he died on the cross for them. What an honor, what a privilege it is for them to be able to have the Bible now in their language where they don't have to learn another language to read, but now they can have it in their own language. New Life Fellowship has been working together with the Bible Society. Uh, the director of the Bible Society, Hang Pisset, he's a member of our church, has been for years and years and years. He leads worship here, sometimes preaches every once in a while. And we're so happy and we're so thrilled to have a close partnership with them. Um, we've also, in these services for today, we're actually giving a portion of the tithes and offerings that come to be able to help people. You know, th there's 20 different languages besides Khmer in Cambodia. I was talking to uh, uh, Pisset this afternoon. I'm saying there's 20 different languages. Only three of them have the New Testament in their own language. And the rest of them, the other 17 of them or so, they have portions of the Bible translated into their language. But we want to do what we can to continue to support them because, you know, we're happy to have the Bible in our language, in Khmer and in English, but there's people who don't even have it, any of it in their language. So we need to not just evangelize and talk to people who are around us, but think bigger. Think outside ourselves, even outside our own church, outside our own world. Who are the people that we can have an impact on? And by giving and helping these organizations, supporting them, maybe even if you want to volunteer at some of these organizations to see, man, I am so happy. I would love to help out in some way. What can I do? These are the things that we can do to see God's kingdom continue to grow in our nation here and in, through all, uh, throughout all the world. So, Evangelism, 
Evangelism is for us. We have the heart of evangelism. New Life Fellowship has a heart of compassion, an outward focus. But this is just one small example of what's happening even further out, further outside our everyday world. But we can have an impact and we can partner together with organizations like the Bible Society of Cambodia and we can see God's kingdom come to people who have never had the word of God before in their lives. Amen? Isn't that awesome? Isn't it great to be a part of something like that where it's not just them doing it, but we're involved too. We're part of it. New Life Fellowship is helping to see that happen in our country. Amen? Let's stand together. What I want to do is I just want to spend just like two minutes. Let's just lift up our voices and pray for God's blessing on the Bible Society of Cambodia and for all the people who are sacrificing to translate the Bible into the different languages in our country. Can we do that? God hears your prayer. So let's lift up our voices and pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray blessings, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for your word, oh God. We pray. God, we thank you for them and we lift them up and we speak blessings over them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would just breathe upon them by your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Bring them grace and encouragement and strength, O oh God. Lord, that they would be able to complete the task that they have begun. Lord God, and for all those people who don't have the Word of God, I pray that you would raise up people, God, to continue the work, to continue the work to see every person would have the Word of God in their heart and language that the Word of God would bring forth life within them. God, we thank you for bringing us together with the Bible Society of Cambodia, and we speak blessings on them and on their organization. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like we said, at the, like we said a portion of the tithes and offerings that you guys give today will go towards uh, the Bible Society of Cambodia and the work that they're doing. So give in faith. Also for Christmas coming up, you know, it's only probably four or five weeks, I think, until Christmas. It's coming up fast. And what we're doing, our focus this year is going to be Christmas in our small groups, uh, in our new life family. And so if you don't have a small group, now is the time. Now is the time to sign up for a small group, get connected, celebrate the birth of our Savior together in a, in a small group as a church family. Amen? We have a booth outside, very awesome one that was decorated for Christmas. There's people out there, so sign up for a small group and have a blessed, blessed week. Bless you guys, and we'll see you all next week. Amen. Thank you.